uh, the people I work with out here on the drilling and stuff, you couldn't ask for better people to work with. And to have the surveyors and all the engineers and everybody come in as a cohesive unit and put this all together was just, I think it's, I was flabbergasted by it. It's really something special. I think it's fantastic. I mean, it's, I'm proud to say that I was here when it was built. You know, it went from nothing to, you know, now we've got this big, huge landmark. Because this would be here longer than me and I was part of it. You know, it's something to be proud of, I think. As a normal person, myself included, prior to starting to work here, didn't have a clue what was involved in building a dam. And all because of, you know, us working so well together and everything and, and how high we've come up, and it's, it's awesome, really awesome. The Santa Ana River flows from the mountains of San Bernardino County all the way to the Pacific Ocean. It looks pretty tame most of the time. In fact, it's often bone dry. But the river is a sleeping giant. On average, major floods happen along the Santa Ana River every 25 to 30 years. The largest flood on record was in January 1862. Today, a flood of the magnitude of 1862 could impact over three million lives in densely populated Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties and cause more than $15 billion of damage. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers calls the Santa Ana River the greatest potential flood threat west of the Mississippi. That's why the Corps launched a plan in 1975 to provide more flood protection for communities affected by the river and its tributaries. It's known as the Santa Ana River Main Stem Project. The project centerpiece, Seven Oaks Dam, is located in San Bernardino National Forest, near the headwaters of the Santa Ana River. Seven Oaks will work in tandem with Prado Dam in Riverside County. What that means is, um, as the inflow to Prado rises, uh, the gates at Seven Oaks Dam would be closed to detain all the floodwaters upstream of Seven Oaks Dam. In doing so, we're able to lower the inflow volume and reduce the, the reservoir area behind Prado Dam. It's funded in part by the federal government and built in cooperation with the governments of Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties. Seven Oaks is the largest flood control dam in the United States. Like most dams, it has several main components an embankment, an intake tower, outlet tunnel, a plunge pool, and a spillway. The embankment is usually the first thing people notice when they look at a dam. It's designed to block all water flows from moving downstream. At Seven Oaks, the embankment is 550 feet high and 3,000 feet long. The reservoir behind, or upstream of it, has a storage capacity of over 145,000 acre feet of water, enough to fill an 1,800 mile line of gallon jugs from Los Angeles to Memphis, Tennessee. The intake tower keeps sediment and debris from flowing into the outlet tunnel. Sediments are abrasive and can wear down the tunnel's concrete lining, along with damaging the gates in the tunnel's gate chamber. In the event of a flood, water will flow from the reservoir into the intake tower and then into the outlet tunnel. Inside the outlet tunnel is a gate chamber. The chamber's gates are raised and lowered to control the water flow rate through the tunnel. As the water exits the outlet tunnel, the force of it will dissipate in what's called a plunge pool before traveling downriver. The water exiting uh, the conduit under design conditions is uh, traveling at more than 100 feet per second. So when these high discharges exit the, the outlet works, they are flipped by these blocks which are at the very end of the outlet tunnel and the uh, water is then dispersed and when it falls into the, uh, 
the plunge pool and the energy of the water is dissipated so that when it exits the downstream end of the, uh, the uh, plunge pool, it's moving at a non-erosive velocity and uh, there's no threat to the downstream portion or toe of the dam as we call it. The spillway is a wide channel that acts as a safety valve for floods larger than the dam was designed to capture and control. In the rare event that water in the reservoir ever rises near the top of the embankment, it will bypass the dam, pouring into the spillway and out through a nearby canyon, joining the river downstream of the dam. The process of building the Seven Oaks Dam began long before the first shovel full of dirt was turned over. To determine an acceptable location for a flood control dam, engineers must consider many criteria, including reservoir capacity, topography, geology, and environmental impact. When you're looking at a dam site like this, you're looking for reservoir volume, abutments or ends of the dam that are relatively close to one another to minimize the volume of material. There are key features that need to be present or it can be, become very costly. And one of those is an abutment to put your outlet works tunnel. You also need a spillway site away from the dam but in the reservoir and reasonably excavatable. Equally as important is to find materials nearby that you use to build the dam to make it economically feasible. If the materials aren't locally available, it drives the design of the dam. This, the Seven Oaks Dam site met, met those criteria for siting a dam. Seven Oaks was designed as an earth and rock filled dam rather than a concrete dam because of its location between two branches of the San Andreas Fault. It may be considered that something stronger is better, but in fact that isn't necessarily the case. And by stronger we're, we're talking primarily about rigidity. Concrete structures are rigid, especially in comparison to earth and rock fill materials. Concrete, if it moves, creates cracks. And if there was water impounded behind that, there would be no, no way to check that, that flow. So rigid structures in this environment are not the best choice. An earth and rock fill dam is much more flexible because it's primarily made up of cohesionless materials that can't hold open cracks. We'll move with the uh, cracking under the dam, the vault movement, and will readjust, collapse in, seal the cracks, and be as good as new. Seven Oaks was designed and built to survive an 8 plus magnitude earthquake and a 350 year flood. To determine the geological features of the Seven Oaks site, a program of test drilling was used. Basically we use test drilling as our eyes below the surface. Those things that we can't see at a dam site, we rely on test drilling to tell us. Test drilling showed that materials from nearby locations were suitable for building the dam's embankment. Native bedrock for building the embankment would be excavated from an upstream area called Government Ridge and the spillway location also upstream. Alluvial material that is, the sediment deposited over time in the riverbed by the flowing water, would also be used to build the embankment. These materials were relatively pervious, meaning they would allow water to pass through them. But the most important find was a clay-like material just three miles away from the dam site. This material, being impervious to water flow, would be ideal for building the embankment's central zone, or core as it's called. The biggest problem we had initially here was finding an adequate core material. We looked within about a 20 mile radius and finally found something right around the corner literally in an orange grove that didn't appear uh, initially like it was 
uh, all that adequate and turned out to be an excellent material, probably better than what we had in mind when we first started looking. The next closest site was about 15 miles away and the trucking cost to bring it over would have been prohibitive. We wouldn't have had a project if we couldn't have found that core material close. As part of the design phase, an exploratory tunnel was drilled in the rock at the left end or abutment of the dam. This tunnel followed the alignment that would be used later for the outlet tunnel, an efficiency that saved time and money. Before they could move forward, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers needed to conduct an environmental impact survey of the dam site and surrounding area. The environmental process requires that we negotiate and coordinate with many other agencies. For instance, Fish and Wildlife Service on the federal side uh, is one of the agencies that we work very closely with. Our goal within the Corps is to mitigate for 100% of the impacts that we have to significant species or resources. We did find a woolly star, which is a little purple flower that only grows within the Santa Ana Canyon and the local canyons that are tributaries to Santa Ana River. As a result, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino County set aside 764 acres in the downstream floodplain to manage and preserve this endangered plant. The counties also set aside 139 acres in the upper portion of the Santa Ana River watershed to preserve aquatic resources and deeded land to the U.S. Forest Service to protect the upland chaparral habitat so vital to wildlife movement. Also in the area was an old hydroelectric system built at the turn of the century. Owned and operated by Southern California Edison, the system qualified for the National Register of Historic Places. Much of the original equipment was still being used to generate electricity. Studies revealed that sediment and water filling the reservoir would inundate one of the powerhouses, rendering it inoperative. And in that area, we've taken one of the powerhouses and taken the engines and turbines and relocated those eventually down into the San Bernardino County Museum and have a display and uh, photographs that are preserved for uh, other people to see and for the public to enjoy after we've gone in and had to have those areas removed for construction of the dam. Before the embankment could be built, upstream river water had to be diverted away from the dam site. To accomplish this, the outlet tunnel was constructed and used to bypass the river. The most important part of an earth and rock fill embankment design is what's called the impervious zone, or core. The core helps keep water from passing through the embankment. Surrounding it are filter zones and transition zones made of a variety of materials excavated from the dam site and surrounding areas. Each zone is sized to make use of the materials available to build the embankment and each serves a particular function. Earthen rock fill dams such as Seven Oaks Dam are what we call zoned embankments. You place materials of different physical properties adjacent to one another. Basically, the size of the materials that are in each zone, some may be sand, some may be clay, some may be rock, some may be uh, boulders and cobbles. All, the, all those are sized so that they meet what we call filter criteria. We have eight primary zones, although there are a lot of small subzones that have specialized functions. The reason we have the zones is primarily to lend support to the core while maintaining protection against internal uh, erosion due to seepage. Not only do all dams leak through the core, but after uh, an earthquake or due to settlement, you can develop cracks in the core and transmit fairly large amounts of water. As long as that water doesn't carry